So what was really being protected in the Broughton in the summer of 2001? Alexandra Morton was blaming salmon farms for a sea lice epidemic she predicted would decimate the pink salmon run. So how come DFO couldn't find any lousy fish? We've obtained internal government documents that reveal DFO knew its study of the problem was seriously flawed. Pacific Biological Station was alerted on June 7th. An internal email shows that by mid-month, DFO knew that fish farms in the Broughton were quietly reporting high lice numbers. At the end of June, Dr. Noakes sent in a trawler. It caught about 100 pink salmon and pronounced them healthy and louse-free. But the boat's location was fishy, way out in the Queen Charlotte Strait, not inside the Broughton, where most of the fish farms are located. Anything else. Billy Proctor watched the whole exercise with disgust. They got here three weeks late and they never went near the shore where the pink salmon fry always follow the shore. There was a second big snag in the survey and Dr. Noakes knew it. His own expert had warned the trawl sample potentially severely underestimates the louse numbers. That's because the trawl nets had scraped the scales right off the fish and maybe the evidence too. The parasitologist goes on to say, had these fish been caught in a scientifically sound manner, I would call this a normal parasite load. But given the method that was used, I won't say anything. Um, yeah, I can't comment on that. I, I don't know that comment in particular. I don't know who made that, but certainly... It comes uh, from Whitaker. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, but basically, I mean, that's why we, um, why we chose the two kinds of deer. A second boat, a saner, was quietly sent into the Broughton to take more samples. So we were already three weeks after the fact with boat number one. Now we're boat number two. How late after the alarm was sounded are you now sampling for these fish? If we were notified in um, early June, we're probably f five weeks after the fact. Wouldn't they be dead and gone by the time you arrived? No, I think by the end of June, there'd still, still be fish in the area. But it wasn't June, it was July, and there weren't. Buried within DFO's final report, a report that was released six months later, is one astonishing number. You only got seven fish in the Broughton itself. The way the same gear sampling was done, I mean, it wasn't, the same gear but was not... seven fish. You've gone out and made continuous reassuring statements that said, there's no problem here. You're saying that based on seven fish that you got? No, we're not basing it on the seven fish. We are basing it on, on the, the kind of, of loads that we saw in terms of sea lice and with respect to our trawl gear. But what I'm saying is... But the trawl gear methodology the was trawl problematic. Gear, the trawl gear methodology, I mean, obviously it removes scales, and that's an issue that we did try and, and look at in the, uh, the overall report. As for Alexandra's results, he dismisses them. One of the reasons we use trawl gear is that we know that salmon are distributed vertically in the water column, and you can't simply use a dip net to get a representative sample of the population. I mean, I outfish DFO with a dip net. If you can't catch them, these things are all still in the freezer. Come and have a look. They did not want to look. They did not want to know. They did not want to see the problem. But it didn't end there. And then they came after me six weeks later and said, we're going to investigate you for fishing for these small fish without a license. Neil Fraser was threatened too. His sharp critique of Dr. Noakes and his sea lice study was published in a fishing magazine. And he got mail from the doctor's lawyer. And did you feel that you were being shut down or you were trying to attempt to, to, to silence you in any way? Oh, of course, yeah. She he says he's people still people speaking his mind because scientists who work for DFO can't. These people are afraid. And I think they have very good reason to be afraid. Afraid I think, of what? I think they all know that if they, if they make a public statement against salmon farming, their, their career is going to come to a halt. There's nothing they can do. They just have to wait for some catastrophe. It came last fall. Millions of pink salmon, 99% of the run, did not return to the Broughton. The biggest salmon collapse this coast has ever seen. DFO says it doesn't know how or why it happened, but sea lice are at the bottom of its list. DFO, <laughs> they're, they're, they're telling us fairy tales. They know, they know perfectly well that the sea lice are the problem. 
and they should have been watching for this. Maybe nobody was watching, but somebody was listening and siding with her, somebody with clout. The Pacific Fisheries Resource Conservation Council is an independent salmon watchdog appointed by Ottawa to tell British Columbians and fisheries ministers the truth about salmon stocks. We can't find any other reason for the dramatic decline. The chairman is John Fraser, a former conservative fisheries minister, not your typical tree hugger. Alexander Morton is a trained biologist. And she shouldn't have had to go out there and do this. The governments that we elect and the agencies that the governments establish should have been on top of this. And let's, let's be very frank about it. They weren't. His council has urged that every salmon farm in the Broughton be emptied of fish this month so the few remaining wild pinks have safe passage to sea. But at the same time, the B.C. government has lifted a cap on salmon farm expansion and pronounced its coast wide open for business. Alexandra is watching and waiting. This is the Blunden Pass fish farm where they just started dumping new Atlantic post smolts into the water. You can see the little smolts jumping. They're photographing us now because they're concerned about what we're doing and we're concerned about what they're doing too. But no one is stopping them. We saw them restocking some of these yes. farms. Uh, does that concern you, that restocking in areas that perhaps should be emptied? I mean, they have every legal right to restock the farms. And, and you have a legal right to protect the wild salmon Well, stocks. under the Fisheries Act, we don't have a legal right to order them to, um, to, to get rid of those fish. Who can? Uh, I mean, it, it, Who can province, say that these, the these, these farms could be endangering the wild salmon population? I mean, it, get them out. Who no. can do that? Who has the authority to do that? At this point in time, the evidence is, not, is, not, is simply not strong enough to warrant that kind of strong recommendation. This is like the northern cod all over again on a slightly smaller scale. Because when you mix scientists and politicians, the politicians win every time. <laughs> you can give me for Billy, for it's one. not rocket science. Big money talks, simple as that. Since we first broadcast this story, the B.C. Department of Fisheries has temporarily shut down or fallowed a number of salmon farms in the Broughton. This year's pink salmon run is starting to emerge from the rivers, and the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans has boats on the scene, sampling the fish for sea lice. The first week's count? Well, of 207 pink sampled, 34 were infected with lice. In the Vancouver area, 70 local restaurants have dropped farm salmon from the menu in favor of wild fish. More have promised to do the same. And the BC Salmon Farmers Association has hired public relations giant Hill and Knowlton to counteract what it says is an inflamed campaign of misinformation against the industry.